Okay, so here's the first part printing out. Oh, by the way, how do I cool background music? This is sci fi music for your enjoyment. This is the front of the ship printing out right now. On the cruise ship. Uh, on to the second piece, the main body of the ship. This took, I think, 15 hours to print, so I can bore you all the details that I want you to get for that. Is. And now comes cleanup time. We gotta clean this model. So the whole key here is to have the right tools. Don't put too many supports on it. Something I learned while I'm making this model. It saves a lot of time and the model looks better. Lining it up, making sure it's gonna go together. Here's some other pieces. More toward the back of the ship. Reactor. This is uh, directly in front of the reactor, the landing skid. So the supports there are burned out because the bottom, top half of that skid has a bar closed, so it won't sag. And more cleanup time to clean this stuff out. Like I say, the right tool is perfect for doing this kind of stuff. Try not to cut your hands off when you're doing it. Getting the supports out. This is the piece right in front of the reactor on the back of the ship. Fitting it up, make sure it fits okay. And this is the seal of supports. This is the reactor itself, I believe. Yeah, it is. Reactor. These supports the top of the bottom needs some supports there, so that would be easy to clean off. And there's directly in front of the reactor, the skid, taking the supports off the skid. Gotta do that. They come right off pretty easy if you do it right. A little trimming. Clean that reactor up. See the supports almost fell off before I even took them off on this one. They, they came right off real nice. Fitting it up. What's it going to look like? When we get the orientation right. You got it. There you go. The engines. This, I believe, is the rear engines. The rear of the engines. No, it's the front. It's the front of the engines. Left to right. Clean them up pretty easy, not too many supports. Only in the main crossbeam there, mounting crossbeam to the engine to need supports. Here's the rear of the engines. And you see the thing in the front that's the reactor control room there. And it, it, it failed on this print. You can see it's all over the place. And I printed it out again vertically, printed out beautiful. So there's the rear of the engines. Clean the nozzles up, and they got some supports inside there to clean out. Hope it fits up the front of the engine. Yep, it does. And there's the reactor control room. Ran on top like that. You can see the difference between the two of them. The first one had failed, printed horizontally, and then the second one on the top there I printed vertically and it printed out perfect. And now it's time to glue it together, the most stressful time. Because the glue sets up pretty fast. Glue in the first piece here. And then I fit it up. I realized I didn't realize how quick it set up, so I tried to position myself. And when I put it there, it wasn't quite lined up and it set up. You can see in the final model it did set up. It's got a small ridge line there, but I don't think it's gonna be too noticeable because of the weathered paint look that it has on it when it's finished. There's the accelerator. As soon as you spray that on it, it sets that glue instantly. It's amazing stuff. Trying to hold the pieces together. And now I had another brilliant idea where I positioned the pieces, then put the glue on the outer perimeter because it's so strong, it's all you need. It's not going to hold any weight. And then spray the accelerator and it instantly sets. You can take the piece out. This is called a Panavice. It 
it's a pretty cool device. I got a couple attachments and it's really versatile for holding stuff in any angle you want to hold it in. So you can glue it where you need to glue it at and get it just right. When you have it just right, more just right. Come on, it's good. Good enough. Looks like I missed it. I sprayed it with the accelerator and I'm wiping the so accelerator far, off. So far, so good. Not the perfect model, but the first one I ever built. So. Alright. I'm going to glue the engines on. The engines had a weird mating surface because they printed vertically, so the sides of the print were the mating surfaces for the the uh, the beams that hold the engine to the main body. There's the control room back to that. Get that on there, glued up in place. Yeah, see, I had to fix these seams up. I used a a knife edge on a wood burning device, which I used to cut the plastic and trim plastic. It works really well for this this plastic. This is PLA. Get a position in the device. Don't drop it. Do not drop that. There you go. Good job. All right. Now we have it cleaned up pretty good. Gonna have to doctor it up with Putty. You can see I'm melting it there and breathing in the toxic fumes. That's always good. That fits a little better, I think. All right. Put some glue on there. Why don't we overdo it so we'll never get it apart again? That's enough. All right, position it. And this accelerator is instantaneous. I mean, you can have a quarter inch of glue and it, it, it solidifies instantly, that accelerator, which is pretty amazing. It's really good when doing stuff like this. You don't have to worry about holding the thing in place until the glue sets up and leave your hand off and it moves and that doesn't happen with this, so. Getting there, Shawnee. Getting there. Can't talk. Okay, I can talk again. That was the voice. So, okay, here we go. We're gonna fill these seams up. Literally fill them up with glue as best we can, because you can use it for a filler. And just spray the accelerant. And it's it's instantaneous. Hands in the way we can't see. Move your hand. There you go. Accelerator. And the wipe down. All right, it's starting to look a little bit like the ship now. Hopefully, because it's all together, I think. Now we're going to putty it up. Got this plastic putty that's water soluble, so you can put it on. Tedious job. Spread it around with the putty knife best you can. And then I can use a, uh, see, I have a Q-tip in my hand, dipped in water, and I can really, I can shape, kind of shape the putty. See, it seems how screwed up they were. I needed a lot of putty for that. So, and some of the engines, the one side didn't quite mate. I had to putty that. Get rid of that seam. Yeah, it looks good. It's enough. Put it down. Put it down. There you go. Now the best, my favorite part, not sanding oh and sanding and more sanding even though I have the right sandpaper it's still this is part of heat so the important part is when you put the putty on to get it the best you can and with that water solid I was way able to shape it minimize that sanding nonsense that I hate look how fast I can go really fast Cool. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Wipe it down with tack cloth. Get all the sand dust off of it. The uh, plastic dust from the sanding. Wipe it down real good. And here it is, finished, ready for painting. A little quick look at it. This is gold colored PLA filament. 1.75 millimeters, and it's made by zero. $15 roll, pretty good. 
pretty cheap filament. It took about one and a quarter rolls lower kilogram to make this ship. The ship has about 20% infill, I guess. Made a little hanger out of a coat hanger. Just only that little spray booth in the back. A little too small for this thing, so I tried to put it as close as I could. And we're going to primer it all down. First time using the airbrush. Never used an airbrush before, so it was pretty easy. It wasn't too bad. Pretty, pretty well. This is a bottom siphon airbrush brush. Spraying it down, getting that primer up. This was the best thing I ever did. I'm glad I primered this because this made the top coats look much nicer. It probably would have been horrible if I wanted to primer it. But I watch some YouTube videos and everybody recommends primering your model. Put some top coats on it. more light. Like I have these portrait lights I use for photography in. Brought them in and they worked actually pretty good. Sit down in the chair because I can't bend down. Too old for that. So we'll sit down and do the rest of this. Finishing the primer up. I don't know what I'm doing there. Okay, now we're putting the, five, the top coat of uh, pearlized gray on top of the primer. The coat, base coat, this is going to be the base color of the whole ship. I'm going to paint it up here. Good. Now I had some pictures to go by, a couple of them, a couple were ridiculous pictures, but there were some good ones there. The one is the movie itself, I think, to show it. And I tried the best I could with my limited abilities. First time airbrushing and don't have one artistic bone in my body. To try to make some of the colors match in the pictures. Probably drawn by a professional artist. There's already too much black in the back of the engine, but whatever. It is what it is. It'll still come out okay, hopefully. So we're putting black throughout the model here and there, trying to make it look weathered. Took another airbrush, a different type of airbrush, for the small amount of paint. I think this is silver I'm putting on there now. Over top of the black and gray. And we got some bronze color, copper bronze, I think it's bronze, or gold over top of the other stuff, just trying to layer and make it look like it was, I don't know, in the space in the battle, I don't know, fired up at the Reavers and they survived, and here's the battle scars, and some brown, now we're going to put some brown, I didn't like the brown, I didn't put too much on, it's very, very well either, so I put a little bit of brown on there, and covered most of the spots of the painted brown, so very well. and now some more, a different kind of, this is more of a yellowish or gold, I guess. That other one's bronze. This is much more yellow. And now we got the, uh, I forget what this color is, but it's a really cool color. I thought it was good for the engines, to simulate the, like the heat of the engines. And also we're going to see more black here. We're going to do this. It's more black. I'm going to put black on top of the other colors. I'm trying to blend it and make it more layered. Now this is almost as fun as sanding it. This little brush, which I thought I would never have the patience to do, but each one of these little reactor holes I had to paint. This is a pretty cool color, actually. Come up pretty good. It looks like a, it looks like a heat. It's supposed to simulate heat in the, in the reactor. So I had to print it. The pan device, see the pan device works perfect for this kind of stuff. You can position it in any way. I mean, look at this. Without that, I don't know what I would have did. I had to hold the model, prop it up. Would have been paint all over the place. That worked out really well. Took maybe an hour. Did it twice to do the reactor and the front of it. To brush it best I could. Taking out. You can see that long vice thing for the rack for the uh, panda vice there. It's pretty cool. I think this is the second time around. Pretty good overhead shot. Had to do the overhead shot. Got to do that. A gratuitous overhead shot. Hard at work. Finishing touches. I guess this is almost the final bit of paint. Yeah, 
clearance lights. I painted all the clearance lights just like the picture. I got red and green on port and starboard engines. It has some white clearance lights all over the ship, the bottom and front Here of the it ship. Is. Finished Firefly Serenity ship. And there I am talking about the ship. What it's going to get. Here we see it. Yeah, we got it. Got pretty good for the first time printing this out, painting it out. Yeah, first time I got it. We got it. Not okay. Nice to have a lightning shot like that. And here we go. Here we, here's the final ship. Painted it up. I wanted to put it through the in the studio here and do a little 360 on it. Um, so yeah, if you're still with us, then you're probably going to look at the whole thing because I, <laughs> I keep this on the full 360. It's going to take so many hours. I would say maybe it took all toll 80 hours maybe. Maybe 60, maybe not quite 80 hours. About two weeks maybe to do the whole thing between printing it out and painting it. A lot of learning along the way, so. But that's that's pretty much it. And here's some still pictures of the ship. There we have it's an overhead shot. You can see the layered paint. Yeah. It doesn't look as weathered as the picture did, but it, it came out okay. See the control room has a little red dot on it there and the engines. A close up shot. It came out pretty good. All in all, it came out pretty good. Thanks for watching.